Good day Grade 11s, welcome to week 29. We're carrying on with finance, growth and decay and what we're doing in this lesson and we're learning about timelines. And the reason we have to do timelines is because it helps us when we have it helps us to visualize multiple changes. So if, for example, if we have a whole bunch of changes in the deposit, some withdrawals, and maybe an interest change, then a timeline helps us to visualize what's going on, and then we can work out the sum. So let's look at an example. It says, Wyatt invested 90,000 Rand in the bond market for seven years. The interest rate for the first two years was 8.5% compounded annually. For the next three years, the interest was increased in 9.75% compounded monthly. And during the final two years, the interest was compounded quarterly. Calculate the total value of the investment at the end of the seven years. And to help us, what they've done for the first one is they've actually helped us by putting in our timeline that we're going to use. So let's look at this. It says, White invested 90,000 Rand. So at T0, his principal was 90,000 Rand, right? He put it in the bond market for a full seven years. The interest rate for the first two years, so for the first two years, the interest rate was 8.5% compounded annually. So remember we need to convert this 8.5 to a decimal. So what do we do? We divide by 100 so that becomes 0 0.085. So I'm going to write that over here. So that's 0 0.085 and it's compounded annually. Right. During the next three years, let's change color so we don't get confused. During the next three years, the interest was increased to 9.75%, but it was compounded monthly, compounded monthly. So now the interest rate is going to be what? It is 9.75. We divide it by 100 to get it into decimal, which becomes 0.0. .0 975. But remember, if it's compounded monthly, what do we do to the interest? We divide it by 12. Therefore, do you agree that this becomes 0, 0, 0,0975 divided by 12? That's the interest. The payments, however, we are paying for the next three years, we're paying monthly. So our payments are in is going to be 3 times 12, which is going to be 36. Okay, so our n is 36. And for the final bit, the final bit will change to green. What do we have? We've got during the final two years, the interest rate is compounded quarterly. So it stays at that, but now it is increased, I mean compounded quarterly. So now the interest is going to be 0 0.0975 divided by 4 and for the final two years because it's compounded quarterly n is going to be 2 times 4 which equals 8. Okay so now let's go back and do the sum from the beginning. So what do we have? We know that this is all compounded interest so we know the formula is a is equal to p 1 plus i all to the power of n. Now the principal initially is 90,000 Rand times by 1 plus the interest rate which is compounded annually so it's just 0 0.085 and it is for the first two years so it's from t0 to t2 so that is just 2 so that becomes 90,000 times by 1.085 all squared. So we get out our calculator and we move it over so we can see what we're doing. So we write 1.085 squared times by 90, 1, 2, 3, and that becomes 105,000 950.25 105,950 105,950.25 105, 
0.25. Right, so now we're going to move into our second period where there's an interest change. And this now, this amount that we got out now, is the principal for this period. It's the amount that we got going into this period. So the principal for this period is 105, 950.25. Our interest, we've already worked out, is 0 0.0975 divided by 12 because it's compounded monthly. And the payment, because it's three years, compounded monthly, there are 36 payments. So this time our amount is going to be 105,950.25 times by 1 plus 0 0.0975 over 12 all to the power of 36. So now we need to put that in our calculator and again we move the calculator over so we can see what we're doing and we say okay fine what have we got? We've got 0.0975 divided by 12 equals plus 1 equals to the power of 36 equals and then we times it by 105,950.25 and what do we get? We get 141,781.59 141,781.59 so we get 141,781.59 right now let's move on to our final period so our final period, what do we have? We have this now is the principal for the final period. I'm going to write it down here. So this time the principal is 141,781.59. Remember the interest rate was exactly the same, except now it is compounded quarterly, which means we take our 0 0.0975 and we divide by 4. It's two years, but because it's compounded quarterly, we'd be paid four times per year. So it's two times four, which is eight. So now our A is equal to our P, which is 141,781.59, multiplied by one plus 0 0.0975, all divided by four, to the power of four. Right. Oh, my bad, to the power of 8. Okay, now let's get out our calculator again. And we clear it just to make it easier to see what we're doing. And we go 0 0.0975 divided by 4 equals, then we add 1 to it, then we take it to the power of 8, and then we multiply it by 141, 1.59 and we get 171,906.23 So that there is the final amount that Wyatt is going to get out after investing his 90,000 Rand for seven years. That's not a bad return on investment at all. Right, let's look at another example. It says 5,700 Rand is deposited into a savings account and two years later another 1,900 Rand is added to the savings. The interest rate for the first three years is 13% per annum compounded quarterly and then it's decreased to 11.2% per annum but this time it's compounded monthly. Calculate how much money is accumulated in the savings account at the end of the five years. So you'll notice now that we've got a deposit and we've got an interest change. So let's have a look. We've got T0. At T0 we've got in 5,700 Rand. And then at T2, we add, we add 1,900 Rand. And then we get the money out at T5. Okay, so that sorts out the deposits. Now let's look at what happens with the interest rates. So let's change color and we'll do it in black. The interest rate is the same for the first 
three years. So the interest rate from here to T3 is 13% per annum compounded quarterly. Okay. At T3, it changes to 11.2% per annum compounded monthly. Okay, so if we look at this, do you see how many periods we have to work out? Let's go to blue. We've got period 1, which is from T0 to T2, when we then add in some extra money. Then we've got period T2 to T3 because of that added in extra money. At T3, there is an, T3, there's an interest rate change. So now we've got 3 again because of that. So you need to be careful about this and that's why we do the timelines. So now we're going to do with blue, this dark blue, we'll use do for period 1, which is T0 through to T2. So for T0 to T2, do you agree that our principal is 5,700 Rand? Our interest is 13% compounded quarterly. So we know that the interest, to change it into decimal, we divide by 100, so it's 0 0.13, but it's compounded quarterly, so we divide by 4. And then our N, it's for 2 years. So it's two years, but we are paying it four times each year, so then it's eight. So our A is equal to, and remember we are using the compound formula, A is equal to P, one plus I to the power of N. So the principal is 5,700 times by one plus our I, which is 0 0.13 over four, all to the power of eight. So let's get out our calculator and clear it. And then we say, okay, we've got 0.13 divided by 4 equals plus 1 equals to the power of 8. To power of 8 equals times by 5700 equals. So that's 7,361 rand and 99 cents. 7,361 rand and 99 cents. So that equals 7,361 rand, 361 rand and 99 cents. So now this is the principle for our next section. So our next section, and I'm going to do it in a different color, we'll go to this color, is from T2 to T3. Now our principal is the amount of money we've got out after our first period, which is 7,361 Rand and 99 cents. Plus, what have we done? We've added 1,900 Rand. 1,900. So now our principal is one six nine and three is twelve carry one six so now our principal is nine thousand two hundred sixty one rand and ninety nine cents our interest is still naught point one three over four and our number of payments this is only for one year from T2 to T3 because at T3 the interest rate changes. So it's one times by four because it's quarterly, which is four. So now if we do it, we got A is equal to our new principal of 9261.99 times by one plus 0.13 over four, all to the power of four. And we pop that in our calculator. So let's get that out over there. And we go, let's clear it. 0.13 divided by 4 equals plus 1 equals to the power of 4 equals times by 9261.99. And it becomes 10,526 and 3 cents. 10,526 and 3 cents. 10,526 and 3 cents. 
Okay, so that is the amount at the end of year T3, end of year 3. Now let's move on to our T, our last period from T3 to T5. So we're going T3 to T5. Now our principal is the amount that we had at this point here. So our principal is 10,526 and three cents but our interest rate has changed. Our interest rate is now 11.2 percent compounded monthly. So now it is going to be 0 0.112 remember we have to get it to the decimal. Because it's compounded monthly what do we do? We divide by 12. Our n is how many years? It's two years from T3 to T5 is two years times by how many payments per year? 12, so it's 2 times 12, which is 24. Therefore, our amount is equal to the principal now, which is 10,526.03, times by 1 plus 0.112 over 12, all to the power of 24. So let's get out our calculator and move it over and clear it so it's easy to see what I'm doing. So it's 0 0.112 divided by 12, then I add my 1, then I take it to the power of 24, and then I times it by 10,526 and 3 cents. And we end up with 13,155 rand and 14 cents. 13,000, so it's 13 13, 155 and 4 cents. Not bad at all, not a bad return for investment of originally 5,700 with a second deposit of 1,900. So grade 11s, this is how you use timelines. It, it really does help when you have complicated things where you've got deposits and withdrawals and everything else. So please go practice and then go do the assessment at the end of the section. Have a great day.